All right, what up everybody? My name is Proto and well, this is my first YouTube video back. I've got a little bit more experience content creating on Instagram. I kind of content create there a lot. Hence the reason why I'm shooting in vertical right now. I'm kind of used to it and I kind of want to be rebellious on YouTube. But today is going to be the start of me focusing on this channel. See, I've always did vlogs. I've always just took the camera with me and just went anywhere, right? But I'm done with that. I'm done with that. I think it's time for me to start focusing on what I'm good at. And that's videography. See, I have the opportunity of shooting for people like Miss New York, Miss USA. I also shot a few things for Spike Lee's team. I'm kind of the shit, you know? So I thought I'd debut myself back on YouTube because Instagram algorithm isn't really working for me. But I do know how to use YouTube. And to start off this YouTube channel properly, I'm gonna show you my main camera rig. Now, unfortunately, like, uh, I'm kind of shooting with it right now. So I'm gonna have to switch the camera in three, two, one. Now. You've probably noticed now, I haven't changed my microphone, but I changed the camera. But I'll wait till the end to tell you exactly what camera I changed to. But for now, I will tell you what camera I was just using. That's the Canon R5. This is my very expensive DSLR camera. It's mirrorless, costs about $3,500 for the body alone, 45 megapixels, autofocus is perfect. Everything about this camera is amazing. The skin tones, like it's, it's just amazing, honestly. I try not to say this a lot, but the camera kind of works for you a little bit. Just, just a tiny bit, a tiny, a teeny bit. Now for the lens, I'm using the Sigma 24 to 70 f 2.8 lens from Sigma. Sigma is honestly the brand that I just stuck with. The Canon branded lenses are kind of a little too expensive. Sigma is less expensive, but probably sometimes better quality. This lens has stability, autofocus, you know, the basic stuff, but the clarity of it is amazing. It looks clear as hell. Everything's just sharp and 24 to 70 means that I can be wide angle or I could be zoomed in. That's pretty much what that means. I also have a 50 millimeter one point, it's a 1.4. So I have the 50 mil 1.4 and I have the 85 mil 1.4, both amazing. Those are clearer than this shit, honestly. And I used to use it like bare bones, just like this, especially when doing photography shoots with all these uh, pageant girls that I shoot. But I recently started to appreciate a cage. Hold on, this cage right here. So I'm being so like not careful. I use my fingernail for everything, like literally. <laughs> but I don't really have to, because at the bottom of this cage, it comes with this little screw thing magnetized to the bottom so I could always take it off. Perfect, literally. This cage is by Small Rig, very known for making cages for like all cameras. And on this cage, I outfitted another NATO rail. And the reason I use that is pretty much the reason why I put this cage on in the first place. Let me show you right here. So with this NATO rail, pretty much what I can do, I think I mounted this wrong actually. Oh, I mounted this wrong. This shit is backwards. I'm supposed to be able to hold it like this, but I mounted the mount part on this side instead of this side. So it's supposed to go on like this, but instead <laughs> it goes on like this. My mistake, I will fix that as soon as I finish this video. Definitely didn't fix it. Put it on really quick. That's the beauty of a NATO rail. And then you tighten it right there. Now you kind of have a dual handle camera, which allows for more stability. I love doing this. I can do this. I can also do this and it's perfect. It also comes with a whole bunch of uh, quarter 20 holes and then another cold shoe mount. Now on the bottom, you have a whole bunch of other quarter 20s that you can mount like uh, an adapter for like a tripod or a gimbal or anything like that. But I personally use this. This right here is probably the reason I can switch from one setup to another within a minute because this is a quick release plate. Specifically, it's the F38 mount made by Ulanzi and Falcam. Falcam, Falcam, one or the other. Oh, I thought it was by Ulanzi. It looks like only Falcam makes this. <laughs> Shit, my bad. Anyway, this right here is the F38 quick release system from Falcam, Falcam. This is the full F38 kit. Pretty much you add this plate to the bottom of your camera. This is the mount. You would mount something like a special tripod plate on here. You would mount this to your gimbal. You can even mount this on any one of these holes right here. It literally just slides in easily like that. And then you can even lock it right here. But even if you had it unlocked, it wouldn't even be able to come out. The lock part only makes it that you can't accidentally press this button and then your camera falls out of the mount. I have this plate on every single one of my kits. So I can literally take this from my tripod, put it on my gimbal, put it on my car mount, put it on 
everything. And honestly, if you were to take anything from this video, this is what you take away from it. If you operate professionally videography or photography, adopt a quick release system. It doesn't have to be Falcam, but just get a quick release system. I have like 10 of these. Now the last piece of equipment that I usually add on this to make this a full handheld rig, fully decked out with all features, everything, is my external monitor. Give me a sec. All right, this right here is my Ninja V monitor. It pretty much acts as a recorder or an external monitor that I can view what I'm actually shooting on. See, I don't know if you guys know what C-Log is, but when you shoot in C-Log, it shoots like really gray with no saturation at all. And it shoots like that for some scientific reason that I don't really care to know about. But I do know that I can put that in the editing system and get back almost all the color. And it also makes it that it can have better dynamic range, which means I can bring back the highlights, raise the shadows a lot more than you can on what I'm shooting on. Wait till the end to find out what I'm shooting on right right, right here. Now to fully get this thing to work, you need a external hard drive. Uh, this one is a one terabyte hard drive. You also need a battery and then you need a cable to connect to the camera. And then now with that, if you turn on the, you see? You see how it's like looking up my nose right now? See, there's a whole bunch of features with this external monitor. Like you can obviously record to the hard drive. You see how the colors are different. This is shooting in C-Log, which pretty much it looks desaturated, but this is applying a LUT to that feed. So now you can see what it would kind of look like after you actually color grade it. That's cool. And then you get a whole bunch of other tools like histograms, focus peaking. There's a whole bunch of stuff on this Ninja V that's perfect. Now the problem with this setup is that it's heavy as shit. This battery is heavy. The Ninja V by itself is heavy. So I kind of only use this when I want to shoot in a different format than the one that's in the camera. The one that's in the camera is like my computer is a supercomputer and it barely can handle the video footage. It's like so much. But this shoots in ProRes, easier to edit. And I use this when I want to get a bigger screen just to see my whole video on. As I said, this is my full video editing rig right here in the flush. Perfect. You need it in vertical. You got it. You need it in landscape mode. You got it. I have another mount that I can mount this microphone right here. If I needed a microphone right here, I got it. Perfect. This is my perfect handheld setup right here. I won't even dive into the microphones. I'll do that in a separate video. But if I wanted a microphone right here, as you can see, I can add it. This is the perfect handheld setup for me. And I think if you look at any other content creator, they'll tell you the same thing. Usually I'll do without the monitor. But yeah, this is my favorite handheld setup ever. Like if I'm doing a quick shoot, this is what you'll usually see me using. So I'll end this video here, but I have like 10 more videos to show you guys, especially my next favorite rig. And it's a rig that's really popular actually. And I would say necessary. So anyway, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any suggestions, recommendations, or if you think you know what my next rig is, leave a comment. I bet you can't figure it out. And if you want to see my next videos, which will be like my many different rigs, trust me, this is just the first one. Please subscribe. You better subscribe. Like, honestly. Anyway, I appreciate you guys. My name is Proto, short for Protégé, and, and I'll see you next time. I just realized my dumbass forgot to tell you guys what camera I was using. The other camera I was using was an iPhone 15 Pro Max. Don't worry about it. I will be shooting a video about it. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I hope you loved this video about my main rig, and I'll see you guys next time. And remember, peace and love to everyone.